Hello, and welcome to all of you piano lesson, uh, piano lovers, all over the world. Uh, this is the second of a, a set of videos I intend to make on the waltzes of Johannes Brahms. As I said in the earlier video, in on the waltz number three in G sharp minor. Uh, Brahms wrote these waltzes at the age of 33. That's comparatively young, but not for Brahms. He had already by then composed his great German Requiem and his great piano concerto number one, massive works, massive. And by the way, for the piano concerto number one of Brahms, there is no better performance on YouTube than that by Herbert von Karajan and the pianist Zimmermann uh, playing with the Vienna Symphony. That is a, a video to die for. Please see that. And uh, I haven't looked up on YouTube any videos for uh, Brahms's waltzes, so I don't know what is there, but uh, <laughs> all I saw was the one I uploaded earlier today on the G-sharp minor waltz, the number three. Now, today I'll take up the waltz number two in E major, and it is typical German gemütlich kind. When Brahms was not writing a gigantic work of massive proportions, uh, but a humble little piano solo, uh, uh, he would, you know, he loved Gemütlichkeit. He loved the bell-like sound in the treble. And of course, all Germans love Gemütlichkeit, which can be best described by the word atmosphere or the French word ambiance. They love to light candles, switch off the lights, have a meal by candlelight, you know, and uh, so on. So when I came to New York from Germany, I mean, that was God, that was 36 years ago, I met a wonderful young gay man called Roger Jeff Jaffe. Unfortunately, he is deceased. But he was a great musicologist and music lover, and we became friends. Now, I knew that he was gay, and that didn't make the slightest difference in our friendship. And so when I finally got a studio apartment of my own, because I had even stayed a few weeks with him when I arrived, uh, you know, and we never talked about his being gay, so I assumed that he knew that I knew. But uh, I finally got a studio apartment of my own and I invited him over for dinner. I said, I'll cook a meal for you. You've done so much for me. Now it's my turn. And so, fresh from Germany, when the meal was on the table, I lit a candle and I switched off the light, and poor Roger went, ah. he said, oh, oh, Sarah, you know, I like you a lot. I mean, I really, a lot. But I'm not ready for this. And at once I understood that in America it meant something else. It meant a romantic dinner. It did not mean Gemütlichkeit in the German sense or atmosphere. So I immediately switched on the light <clears throat> and I said, I'm sorry, Roger, there's been a cultural misunderstanding. I was just trying to create a Gemütliches atmosphere. And I wasn't thinking anything romantic. So he heaved a sigh of relief. So. All Germans love Gemütlichkeit, and Brahms was no exception. Let's see what it is like. In 
intimate, relaxed, loving, tender. That was Brahms is, is always loving. Uh, and but it's a sombre kind of tenderness. It's a tearful tenderness. Um, having dealt with the Gemütlichkeit aspect, I would like to say that in this waltz, which is number two in E major, there is a dual rhythm going on. There's one, two, and three. In the left hand, it's not one, two, and three, but it's one, two, and three, one, two, and three. Let's see if I can let that, get that lamp to turn back on. I'm afraid not, so you just have to do with the lighting as it is. No big deal. Uh, so this dual rhythm goes on simultaneously. So in Brahms, there are always these subtleties, this wonderful mastery of the art of composition. And in these waltzes, he is returning to an instrument that he knew inside out and loved with all his heart. So that's the second aspect. Now, of course, all the waltzes are slow, but slow does not mean easy. That's one of the biggest mistakes that amateur piano lovers make. So they think that the first movement of the Moonlight Sonata is easy because it's slow. Or they think that Debussy's Claire de Lune is easy because it's slow, but it's not. I mean, the, the first movement of the Beethoven Moonlight Sonata is in C-sharp minor, and it's even hard for a beginner to read, and there are several double sharps and so on. And it's by no, I mean, it has to be played with great artistry, and it's not as slow as people think it is. So really, it's not easy. And unless you're playing a simplified version of that movement, then one should wait till one reaches a certain level. Beethoven certainly didn't invite it for beginners, or even people at early or intermediate state of piano. Same with Claire de Lune, it's slow, but it's in D flat major, and in the middle there's a big rolling section. Uh, so I've had countless requests from students uh, to teach me either one of these two pieces, and I tell them, my boy, I master, it's really much more difficult than you think. And we start, and then after a few lessons, they say, you know what? You're right, you're right. And then I said, wait a little, wait a couple of years, and then we learn this, you know. So, now the last thing I want to say is that the waltzes of Brahms underwent three forms. He originally wrote them as piano duets. But his publisher, Zimbrook, seeing the popularity of these waltzes, asked him to write them also as piano solos, because, you know, it's hard to find another pianist who is at the same level as you and willing to come for rehearsals and practice and so on. So it's much easier to play them solo. So Brahms wrote the solo version, from which I am playing. And then, even this was not enough, and the publisher said, you know, Johannes, people love these waltzes so much. Why don't you write a slightly easier ver solo version? So Brahms did that as well. So the third version of these waltzes is an Einfaches Ausgabe, or an easy edition. I'm playing from the, the normal edition. So let us enjoy this waltz.
I haven't, I haven't over-practiced it, so I hope it goes well. <laughs>